Great. I want to welcome everyone this evening. Well, it's good of you to give up an hour of your evening to talk about this. I, I personally feel it's a really important topic in our district because we do have a, a fair number of clubs, both new clubs and existing clubs, who are struggling with low membership. And while growing our district is an amazing thing and it's been fantastic to see that trend continuing and growing over the last few years, I think that possibly we could have been doing more as a district to support some of our existing clubs that are battling a little bit. So this is an initiative that um, was, I was approached to run this by our club growth director, distinguished toastmaster Ed Mugamandani, who we'll be hearing from a little bit later. And in doing this, in researching and putting all my ideas together, I've also approached one or two of the existing really, really fantastic models and processes, strategies that District 74 is running at the moment and we'll be incorporating that information into the call as well. What I'd like to do as a process is I'm going to talk for the first little while and as I talk, if you do have any questions, please type them into the chat bar and when we have time to look at those questions, we will do so. We're going to address four main steps in the process. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible and try and address each of the questions as we go through each of those steps. But then I'm hoping that at the end we should have 10, maybe 15 minutes to try and address some of the specific concerns that you have in supporting the clubs that you are. In particular, in terms of the welcome, I'd like to welcome, as I say, our Club Growth Director, Ed Moore, who um, should be logged on now, and to thank him for approaching me with the request to do this workshop. I'd also like to thank our District Administration Manager, Frank Zuro, who's put it all together from a, a technical point perspective, and our District Public Relations Manager, Margie Sneedon, who's going to be assisting us a little bit later on, particularly with the tool that District 74 is using at the moment, the relaunch model based on work done by the American Toastmaster, Frank Furbush. So we're going to address a lot of things in this workshop. I'm going to move straight into the material because there is quite a lot of it. And one of the questions I posed in advertising this workshop was the question, what is the first step that you should do if you are trying to support a Toastmasters Club? And I believe very strongly that that first step needs to be to get the buy-in of the members of the club. Absolutely 120% you need to get the buy-in of the committee of the club. But ultimately, if the members of the club don't support the initiative to grow and extend that club, to gain new members, to try and make themselves a stronger club, then you're going to struggle. It needs to be a team effort. You as club coach, as an area director, as a member of the club who's trying to strengthen that club, you are not going to be able to do so without the support and the buy-in of the members of that club. Because, believe me, and I've done this, and maybe I'll tell you the story of this time, if you are doing all the work, it is not going to be sustainable. Way back in 2003, which was the first time I served as a club coach, I went into a club it had eight members. I would join the club, which meant I was one of those five members they needed to grow towards distinguished status. I registered three educational awards, which helped them get some of their goals. At the end of the year, we joined up four new members. We'd reached our five goals. We achieved distinguished club status. I thought I was just the best thing. 
because I was a successful club coach and I left. That club struggled on for another few years but eventually it died. Why? Because I hadn't transferred knowledge and skills to those members. I hadn't empowered the committee. I hadn't empowered the club. And ultimately, the only one who gained from that experience was me. So when we are trying to help a club to grow, it needs to be a team effort if we want it to be a sustainable effort. So that to me is the step one in the process. And if you've got any questions, type them in as we go along. Have we had any questions so far, Marty? No questions as yet, Lois. Okay. Okay. Sorry, okay. sorry, Lois. This is, is Sorry, Lois, this is Meryl. Um, I did post a question, but maybe it didn't come through. Is you know you talk about what, um, getting buy-in from the committee and from the club, but can you elaborate what steps you should take to actually get that buy-in? It's a communication thing. The more you can speak to the members and demonstrate to them how much easier their life will be if there are more people involved, how much less of a how much less pressure there will be on each of the members in trying to fill an agenda, how much easier it will be for them to, to operate and learn and grow in a club that is a stronger club, a more successful club, and a club that is operating efficiently, the easier it will be for them to give your buy-in. And it may be that you need to sit down with each of those members and say, we need to make this work. Or even better, do you want this club to succeed? Do you want to continue learning and growing and learn and grow even more? And will you support us in the, in the initiative to try and grow this club? So it's showing, it's reinforcing the value, not only of the, what people, as individuals, are getting through Toastmasters, but also the benefit that they will gain if this club is stronger, if there are more members. Does that answer your question, Meryl? Yes, thanks, Lois. Um, I just posted another question to say, okay, um, but, you know, how can you define whether your definition of success and the club's definition of success is on the same page? The definition of success that we are using generally is that of what Toastmasters says a successful club is doing. But that's a very good point. And that again should come up in conversation. Now there are some clubs that are operating quite well as clubs that are very few members. The members that are there are getting what they want out of the club. Does that mean that club is struggling? Well. For those members, maybe not, but what could they be, how could much more could they be benefiting if there were more people involved, if the club was thriving? The, the reality is that there is attrition, that members do leave. And in certain cases, we lose members because they are transferred away from the area where hopefully they will join a different club. We lose members because their priorities change. We lose members because they don't see the value in the program. They don't see the link between what they're doing and what we're offering. Or eventually we lose members because, blunt as it is, they pass on. So there is a need to understand what the club sees or what individual members see as a successful club, but also to try and bring across the sense of how much more benefit there may be if the club is stronger. I think it is a, a deeper question than that, and maybe I'm being quite superficial. If you want to talk to me offline about that, Meryl, please do, because it sounds like there's a specific club that you're referring to at the moment. So maybe we can chat about that offline, maybe we can give you a call or something like that. Uh, that would be great. Thanks, Lois. Okay, not a problem. 
Okay, I want to move on to the second aspect of, well, the second step of what I see as important in club support. And this is where I believe often club coaches and those supporting clubs who are wanting to grow really struggle. I'm going to take one step, maybe backwards, maybe no, sideways. One of the other comments that I posted when advertising this workshop was that I do not believe there's a single club in District 74 that has a problem with membership. In fact, I'm going to extend that and say that there isn't a single club in Masters worldwide that has a problem with membership. Now, I'm sure that some of you are thinking, you're crazy. My club's got only six members or eight members. How can you say we don't have a problem with membership? What I believe is that low membership is not a problem in itself. It is a symptom of other problems that are occurring in the club. And as a club coach or someone who's trying to support a club in its growth, challenge that we have is to identify what those actual problems are and to help the club to devise a plan and then to resolve the problems. So the next question may be, what do you use to assess the club? And again, I'm going to say if you do have any questions, just post them in the chat line and we'll, we'll get to them once we work through a bit of this. There are a number of assessment tools that you can use. The one is, which is most commonly spoken about is Moments of Truth. Moments of Truth is a module from the Successful Club series of educational programs. It is a Toastmasters module. It takes about an hour to run in a club meeting. And the basic idea is that you get feedback from your members on how they feel, what they feel the club is doing successfully and the areas that they feel the club might need to improve. And that can give you a basic idea of what is going well and what isn't. I say I personally am not a fan of Moments of Truth. I've seen it run in clubs often. I've seen it run badly in clubs too often. But I've never seen it successfully used in a club to help resolve the problems. Now that can be firstly that the club tries to rush through it and do it in 15 minutes, which is not going to yield all the information that is needed. It may be that the club sits down afterwards and goes, well, we've got the information, that's done great, we can move on. So possibly it's the program is not at fault, possibly it's just the way it's being run and the implementation and taking the important steps, which is looking at the information, understanding the feedback that you've been given, and looking at impact, um, implementing solutions to fix the problems. So I'm not saying that Moments of Truth is a bad program. It's been run incredibly successfully around the world. I've just not seen it used effectively myself. And if you have, maybe just drop it into the chat line. We can get back to that um, at, at a, a future time. Another assessment tool that you can use is a SWOT analysis, looking at the strengths and weaknesses of the club, as well as the opportunities and the threats. And essentially, that would be sitting down with the members or with the committee and looking at what strengths does a club, because every club has strengths. Every club has weaknesses. Every club has opportunities, things that they can start doing to help them grow stronger, that are opportunities that are there waiting for them to, to, take, um, to act on them. And every club has threats. And unfortunately, nowadays, realistically, one of those that we need to understand is the Rand dollar exchange rate and the increase in dues. So that is a threat that is going to hit our membership and is going to hit our clubs. But there are ways around that. So a SWOT analysis is a, a way that you can use to understand where your club is at. And again, the more feedback you can get, 
from the committee and from the members, the more you can gain an objective perspective of what's happening in the club. A third assessment tool that you can use is a gap analysis. Look at what could be happening in the ideal world. Look at what is currently happening. And then look at the gap between those two and try to understand what needs to happen to correct that gap. And then the final one, and yes, this is a bit of me putting my own stuff forward, but this is a field that I've worked in now for several years. When I was standing for the position of International Director in 2011, I put together a document that is taken from a number of different Toastmasters resources, including the checklist for um, club excellence. It looks at some of the activities of a club, looks at all sorts of things, and has devised those into a single page assessment form based on what I see as the five critical areas of club operations. And by going through that form, it'll give you a basic idea of what is working and what is not. So just to recap on those, and there are other um, assessment tools you can use. Those are just four that I've seen used and used effectively. Uh, yeah, or no, have been used effectively. So the first one, again, is Moments of Truth, the Successful Club Series. The second is um, the, the SWOT analysis, looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that face a club. The third one is a gap analysis, looking at what should be happening and what is happening, and trying to bridge the gap between the two. And the fourth one is my own assessment tool, which I will be happy to share with anyone who wishes to have it. I want to look a little bit more closely, because all of these look at certain activities in a club. And if we look at club activities, they can be broken down into several main areas. And a lot of this is drawn from my own personal experience of being a Toastmaster for 17 years, of working as club support coordinator in District 74 for three and a half years, and in working as part of an international team in Club Coach Weekly, um, which was a couple of years back, before World Headquarters shut us down. But there's a lot of input, a lot of discussions that have taken place, and all of this has come down to my understanding or my belief that there are several key areas. And as a very simplistic way of assessing what's happening or not happening in your club, we can look at the following. The five areas are public relations, membership conversion and retention. Area three is meeting quality. Area four is administration. And area five is leadership. Just to go into that a little bit more deeply, area one, public relations. If you regularly at your club meetings have a good number of guests, it would indicate that your public relations activities are working effectively. If, however, you're not, if you're having the odd guest here and there, or no guests at all, and I'm not talking visiting Toastmasters, I'm talking guests, people who are not Toastmasters. If your club is not regularly having guests at the meeting, then possibly either your PR, you need to look at the public relations, assess whether it's being done effectively, whether you're reaching the target market that you're looking for in your club, or whether you need to operate and do something differently to reach out to new members. And obviously that's going to depend on the culture of your club, what type of club you have, because if you're in a corporate club, you're going to work that differently from how you will in a community club. If you're in a university club, again, it's going to be different. If you're in an advanced club, you're going to need to use different techniques. So that relates all to public relations. Is your public relations activity, are, they, are your public relations activities effective or not? The second area, membership conversion and retention. This is talking about 
how many of the people who come to your meetings come back? How many of the people who come to your meetings, guests, actually join your club? How many of the people who join your club stay beyond their CC2 or 3, beyond the first six months dues period? And if you're not converting guests to members, if you are not retaining the members who have joined, then you need to analyze why that is happening. It could be in terms of the conversion rate. It could be either that the, the process that your club is using to convert guests to members is not effective. It could be that your meeting quality is not good enough, that people aren't seeing a direct link between what you're doing in your meetings and the skills that they're wanting to develop. It could mean that they're not seeing the relevance of the Toastmasters program to what they need to learn to become better communicators and leaders. And sometimes it is just as simple as explaining what it is that we do in our Toastmasters meeting and how it equates to real world skills. I want to talk, just mention very quickly two resources you can use for guest to member conversion. We will go back and talk about one of them a little bit later, but the two resources I want to mention are, again, the Successful Club Module Closing the Sale, which is a very powerful educational session which is not presented particularly often. And the other one which has been fantastically successful in District 74 recently is the Relaunch Model. And I'm going to ask Margie to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so that's our second key area which you need to assess. So the first area is public relations. The second area you need to assess is the guest conversion and retention. The third area to look at is your meeting quality. And I already touched on this very briefly, but just to highlight the key points. Are your members getting what they want from your meetings? Are the meetings professionally run? Do they start and end on time? Do your members understand what it is that they are gaining from the program? Are the members being supported, mentored through the initial stages? There's a, a whole lot about adult learning theory that we could discuss here about how adults learn. And that does impact a lot on membership retention as well but we don't have time now. In, in my dream world, the district would let me run a full day workshop which would help identify the problems in clubs and to formulize or formulate solutions that coaches and, and area directors could take away and say, right, this is how we work from here with the clubs. But that's just a dream that I've been holding for some time. I don't know if it will ever happen because I know there are all sorts of things the district needs to be doing. But the main point that you need to understand is that if the meeting does not run consistently at a high quality and if the guests and members aren't seeing the links between what they're doing in the club meetings and the real world skills that they will be developing, then the chance that they will leave is high. So you need to ensure that the meeting quality is good or assess how effective it is. So that's the third area. The fourth area is administration. Now this may sound crazy, but the number of times that I've gone to a club that looks fantastic. You attend a meeting, there's 20 people there, the meeting is full, but, and everyone is excited, they're showing the value, and it looks like a great meeting. But you look at that club on paper, on the Toastmasters International Reports, on the international website, and from the figures that appear on the reports, that club is in trouble. There's only eight paid members, there's no educationals registered, there's no guests registered, and all it is is that the administration is not happening. So when you're assessing a club according to what you see on the Toastmasters Reports, and assess that it looks different from what you see happening in the clubs, you need to check 
if the administration is being done, if new members are actually being signed up with World Headquarters, if the pay member payments are being processed, if the educational awards are being registered, and you'd be amazed how often those slip through the gaps. So just to recap again, area one is public relations, area two is membership conversion and retention, area three is meeting quality, and area four is administration. The fifth and final area is that of leadership. And this talks to how effectively the club leadership team is performing their roles. Are they managing any conflict in the club? Because believe me, nothing kills a club faster than conflict. Are the club officers doing what they should be doing? Are they getting the training that they need, the support that they need? Are they running educational sessions? Are they feeding back to the members when they're making decisions about the club? There's a whole lot of things around um, the club leadership team that can be either effectively or not as effectively done. So those are what I see as the five key areas that we need to use to assess whether a club is running effectively. I want to stop at this point and just ask Maggie if we've got any questions about any of the assessment tools or the assessment process. Yes, Lois. So if we, we do have questions, just type. We do have questions. We have three questions, one from Nikki, one from Nimsa, and one from Tabo. Firstly, Nikki said, what are the five areas of success in your model, Lois? So, I, don't, I don't know if you've covered uh, that I, now. Mm. Yeah, I, I think Lois has, Margie. Okay. Am I correct? Yes, I think okay, so. Great. Thanks, Lois. Nikki. The next question Sorry. is from... Next Lim question. Lois, must I read the next question? Yes, please. Okay. It's from Nimza. She says, what can I do to assist the club if the Exco team does not see the need for assistance? The feeling is that you are interfering and don't believe in the leadership capabilities. That's quite a complicated one. I, the first club coach that I ever appointed, I appointed to a club who didn't want him there. Mm. And eventually they turned around and said, we don't want him, we're not interested, and we're not very impressed with what you did and it caused more difficulties than solutions. It may be that asking one of the, if, if you're struggling to get the club leaders to see the value of what you're doing, the first step is possibly to sit down with them and have a discussion about that and try and show the value that you can bring to them, to reinforce that you're not there to replace them or because their leadership is not being effective but you're, that you're there to support them, to support the club and to help them to grow, that you are a, res a resource to help them. So that's possibly a first step. As a second step, you might find it helpful to refer to someone higher up the leadership chain like your division director or even the area director to bring them into the conversation and see if possibly someone higher up on the leadership hierarchy might be able to bring um, a different perspective in to give you that support that you need. Just to, to talk to the club leadership team and to reinforce that it's not them, they are not being attacked, you are there to support and help them. Is that, is that a viable solution or is, have you already tried all of those suge suggestions? Uh, uh, hello. So I've, I've been with the club since its inception. And the reason who I have is that I've, I've been in, the, in all the experts over the last four years. It's only this year where I'm not part of the experts. 
um, I'm now playing a higher role, so I'm the area director, and, and my question to them is always, as my home class, is to actually be extending and at a point where if I go out and visit other clubs, I should then make an example of the club where I come from. But it is more of a, a cool and quick type of a situation where you need to now justify why are you jumping in, you got it. But yet when you look around the room, the numbers are decreasing and the, 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 the attendance is, is not what it is supposed to be. Yeah. No, so I'm having some difficulty hearing you. I, I don't know if it's the microphone that you're using isn't isn't as clear. So I'm I'm not I can't give you a clear answer at the moment because I can't hear the details of what you're saying. But I do have your email address. Do I have your permission to drop you an email and we can chat about it in, in that sense? Would that be helpful to you? Not a problem. I'll, I'll drop you an email. Hopefully once we finish the call, I'll just simply drop you a mail, give you my phone number, ask for your number and we can connect offline. Which I I'm, I'm, I'm regret because I know that the experience that you're having in your club is quite likely what some of the other people supporting their clubs could also learn and benefit from. But let's see what we can do to get the information first and then we can look at how we can disseminate it to the benefit of others as well. So I'm sorry I can't give you a better answer than that right now. <coughs> hey, Maggie, the third question. Okay, Nikki just wanted to comment about the question of NIMSAs. Nikki, do you still want to comment? Uh, no, it's not about NIMSAs uh, a question at all. It's just a general question. Uh, it's a comment rather than a question. What I'd like to say is I think oftentimes Clubs, they know they're struggling, but they're not aware that they can ask for a coach. And I think the best results are when a club asks an individual to be their coach. I think the whole coaching program is something that we need to publicize and talk to struggling clubs about in more detail so that they could a struggling club could potentially identify somebody that they that would resonate with them um, and fit with the profile of their club so that the, the result would be more successful. I mean obviously if they think that somebody who's just joined is going to be a good coach then we would need to evaluate that but I do, I'm Ravonia's coach and I did not offer to be their coach, they asked me to be and I think that we are being successful and they will be distinguished because they want to be coached and they want to be coached by me. Which is a very good point, Nikki. Thanks for raising that. Thanks, I Lois. Think... Thanks, Margie. Okay, shall I go for the, the next question? Well, just, just wait because I think I'd like to just um, comment a bit on the, what Nikki said. Okay, sorry. There are certain criteria that have to be met in order for someone to be placed as a coach. You cannot be a coach of a club of which you are a paid up member. You can only coach the club of which you are not a member. And that's, well, no, you can only gain credit towards the advanced leader silver if you are not a member of the club. And I think that that talks a bit to that if you're inside of the club, you may not be able to see objectively what is going wrong, what is going right. It's very easy because we're part of the, the system, it's very easy to just see that the system is working so we're not understanding what could be going wrong. So possibly the objectivity of a slight outsider might be of benefit. But as Nikki has said, the, the, the club needs to get on with the person who is serving as their coach. They need to accept them and be willing to work with them. But the first thing is that they have to accept that they need they need help. And I think that, that touches back to what um, Lomsa said, that 
That's where she's struggling, but the committee doesn't see that they have a problem. Again, more complex issues than perhaps we can touch on in this hour, because I'd like for us to work through as much of this to the basic material as we can. And I do understand that I'm giving a, an overview, because we only have an hour, and that often the devil is in the details. The difficulty is in the details. And that, I think, is an area that does need to be addressed. And hopefully there will be someone in office at the cabinet level next year or at a coordinator level who will be willing to take the time, who will have the experience to put into supporting those of you who are engaging with struggling clubs and, and try and support and offer help where they can. Okay, but a good, good comment, Nikki, thank you. Any other comments? You said you had one or two more? I've got Mommy? two more. I've got two more. One from Tabo. He says, how do we achieve meeting quality with only few people in the room who are all guests? Tabo, that talks a lot to the resources. In, a, in an area, and I'm talking a geographical area, not specifically a Toastmasters area, but in an area where there are clubs around you, you have the ability to draw in support from existing clubs. And in that way, you can bring people in to help you to help that club to make your guests see that there is value in the program. The second one, and I've seen this one all too often, you go to a club that is quite small, and the Toastmaster or the club president stands up and says, I'm really sorry this is such a small meeting. And the guests go, oh, it's a small meeting, it must be a bad club. They don't know what a normal meeting is. So never apologize. I think if you are in, obviously, areas where there are fewer or no clubs in the immediate geographic vicinity to assist, it becomes more difficult, but possibly using some of the online resources to assist. Now that World Headquarters is acknowledging that Skype can be used and, and other um, processes like, like this go to meeting process as well, there are online tools that can be used to in inverted commas, bring more people to the club meeting. So just because the club is um, a little out, outside of geographical touch, there are other... You, you can get creative. Change the meeting structure a little bit so that it doesn't appear that you've got pop-up Toastmasters, the same two people popping up and down and doing every role. If you can't bring other um, visiting Toastmasters in to fill some of the roles and increase the energy and the vibrancy of the meeting. Try to find creative ways of doing that through online resources, changing the agenda slightly, focusing on, on different things on that agenda that can still demonstrate value. Again, you'd need to look at the specifics of the situation, but those are a few ideas that can be tried. Okay, how well does that answer the question? Lois, could I make a comment there on Tabo's sure. question? We've, which, Lo, if we have time, then uh, Lois will let me talk about the relaunch, the D74 relaunch program we, that we're doing. The beauty of that. Rather leave of the relaunch until that time, but I, I think oh, it is oh, okay. also a tool that could be used at this time. But let's just rather finish these questions and then oh, okay. I'd like okay. to touch no, on No, that's fine. I just want to tie it in with Tabo's question. I just mustn't forget. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Shall I go for the next question? Because these questions are coming in fast and furious. <laughs> okay. okay I, don't, um, I, don't want, I don't want to spend too much time more on the questions now. We will get back to them 
but we are oops, 8.41 already. Yes, so what should we So we've only got 20 minutes. Yeah. Should we pin this question one more now? later? Okay, then... No, actually, let's rather do that. Okay, we'll pin that for later. We're not ignoring them, we're just deferring them while I go through the, the next three areas. The, the guest to member conversion, I mentioned the relaunch model that District 74 is using. And I've asked Margie if she could speak for just three or four minutes about a little bit about the product, the, the model, how it works, why it works, and what it can be used for. And I know it's a tough ask to do it in only three or four minutes because Margie's been working on a very comprehensive document with a lot of paperwork involved. But it is a tool that is incredibly valuable and useful for a club that is needing to bring in members and to understand a new way of converting guests to members. So let's, Margie, if I can hand over to you now. Okay, thank you so much, Lois. I'm going to really summarize the relaunch model very briefly because it's a very large subject. And I want to thank Lois so much for helping me with the relaunch document. She's been editing, suggesting, putting it into beautiful, logical order, which I was very grateful for. The whole relaunch model develops, uh, it almost happened by accident. From the beginning of this Toastmasters year, we'd been working on launching new clubs using the Rick Furbish method or the Rick Furbish concept. Rick Furbish was a gentleman who started 108 clubs in three years. And we started to use this and it was incredibly successful. And we had been working on a number of launches with this. Then at SummerCon this year, Durban Club came and chatted to me and said, Margie, we're getting so many guests at our meetings because it's Durban Club. So when you search Durban Toastmasters on Google, you get Durban Club. So most of the guests land up at Durban Club, but they weren't converting them to member. So after we chatted a while, I said to them, why don't we do a relaunch of your club? Just as we do a new club, a, a, a new club launch, let's do a similar thing for your club. Get as many gets as possible. We'll have this special agenda that is focused 100% on engaging with the guests. And they were very excited. And then I didn't say anything more. A little bit later, they messaged me to say, we've got a whole lot of guests coming, please tell us what to do. And we did, we then developed what we do for a new club, for Durban Club, and we called it the relaunch. And that is where it started. And we've subsequently used it more than once, and it's been, it's really been a success. The secret in the agenda is that it is extremely simple. And when I send it to a club, they look at this agenda and they think, oh, this is such a simple agenda, I better beef it up, make it look more interesting. But the agenda is, is designed 100% around engaging with the guests. If I can ask you a quick question, when you go to a Toastmasters meeting and you don't have any role on the program and you sit from the beginning to the end as a spectator, as an audience member, do you feel that at times you're not quite, you, you, you haven't engaged, you haven't been part of the meeting? Well, our guests feel exactly the same way. Now, the first rule is you can't put them on the agenda and you can't give them speaking opportunities because you pay to play. So this agenda is designed to engage with the guests without having them on the agenda and to give them that same buzz that you get after you've been to a meeting and you get home and you can't go to sleep because, wow, that meeting really got your adrenaline going. And that is what it is. Now, there's a whole document about this, about six pages long. Uh, there are a whole lot of at attachments that you print out for your guests. But your job is to make sure that you get guests there. And the relaunch agenda tells you how to run that meeting. And the beauty of a Tabo is that you can run this with very very few Toastmasters. 
And that's the beauty of this agenda. And that's the relaunch. Great. Thank you, Margie. Thank you. And just to say to you, if you would like more information about the, the relaunch model, if you'd like to read through the documents and take a look at it or try it out, contact Margie and she will provide you with the information. I just want to make one comment at this point and say that to me, I, I love the concept. I've looked at it. I've worked with Margie once she approached me. And it is a really powerful tool that can help clubs. But I want to, I believe that if you haven't gone through an assessment process and understood what is causing the low membership in the club, then getting new members to join up is not going to be sustainable. You need to get them there, help them to see the value, sell them on the concept, but keep them because they are getting what they want from high quality meetings. So to me, the relaunch model needs to follow the step of understanding the challenge or the, the, the problems that are facing the club in the first place. Either the PR, the guest conversion member, or the, the guest member conversion rate, meeting quality, the administration problems, or leadership problems. So it needs to be taken, cannot be taken in isolation. Okay, thank you, Margie. That was a great summary. It's a difficult thing to summarize into a few minutes. You did it well. Obviously, you're now sitting there. You've got the buy-in from the club members, hopefully. You've been through the assessment. You understand where the challenges are, what the strengths are, what needs to happen. Now what? I'm only going to touch very briefly on these two points, which is sad because this is where the work really starts. You need to sit down with the club committee to discuss with them what you've found in your assessment and formulate strategies to resolve the problems, whether it's in public relations, whether it's in conversion, whether it's in leadership, but admin, whatever you found in your assessment, you now need to chat to the club committee and develop strategies to help them overcome those challenges. Now, a couple of things here, we've already touched on it. Use resources from your Toastmasters network where you can. If you know of a Toastmasters club that is doing really brilliant public relations work, or just one person who's skilled at doing public relations. If you see that that's the problem, see if you can get them in to do some work with the club to help them develop their public relations. If you see a club who's been fantastic about converting guests to members consistently, maybe get them involved to help with the relaunch because they have that skill. We are a huge network of Toastmasters, and often we struggle because we think we are the only ones battling with these problems. That's not true. All you need to do is to reach out, and there are a number of different ways of doing that. I can't guarantee that we can always find you support, but I think you'll be amazed that more often than not, there will be people who will be happy to give you the support and assistance that you need to help you help the club. And again, just to reinforce that the strategies need to be implemented by the club, not just by you. And hopefully not just by the one key player in a club. I'm sure you've all seen Toastmasters clubs that revolve around one person. They are the only one who does anything. They are the one who drives the meetings, who takes on all the major roles. What happens if that member leaves? So it needs to be a club, or at least a club committee, that is working to strengthen themselves. So the developing the strategies is a team effort. And obviously, as with anything, make them realistic. 
make them achievable, and look at the resources that you're going to need and see where you can find those resources. And by resources, I mean manuals, I mean people, I mean skills, possibly even some funding or training. Look at what you're needing and then look at where you can find those resources. Funding is obviously a difficult one because there are a lot of um, policies that determine what we can and cannot do in terms of funding in our clubs. So that's step four is to develop the strategies to solve the problems. And step five, hang on, have I gone one, two, that's step three, my apologies. Step four is to work the plan. And this, of course, is what it does take time, it takes work, it can be very frustrating, and it can be quite slow. Don't lose heart. And if you're feeling you need support, reach out to someone and get that support. But having the strategies isn't going to work unless you ensure that they are implemented, follow up, encourage, motivate, inspire the committee. Because a club who is struggling is often so stuck in just putting together the next meeting that they find it hard to take on something a little different, something a little bit new. And in that sense, you're also there as the person supporting the club. You are there to inspire them, to motivate them, to acknowledge them when they're doing things well, but also to keep them accountable to what they have agreed to do. So that basically is the four steps that I think at a high level are the process that we need to use in supporting a club. And I'll repeat those four steps again. Step one, to get the buy-in of the committee and the club members, that there is that they want to grow stronger, become a stronger club. Two, to do an assessment of the strengths and the areas for improvement of the club. Three, develop the strategies to solve the, the areas that need to be improved and to reinforce the strengths. And step four, to work the plan. Okay, I've got one final person to ask to speak to, but I'm going to actually ask Edmore if he would mind waiting a few minutes so we can go back to a few of those questions and then in the last few minutes I'll ask I'll, I'll ask Ed more to chat. Okay, so Margie, let's go back to what? the questions. Is Margie still with us? Sorry, I was unmuted. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Lois, the conversation... I think you were muted, maybe. Yeah, I was muted, yes. The conversation that's been going on, you've been really hitting hot buttons. Boy, there's been conversation flying in this chat, but I've been extracting the questions from it. Karen had a question that said, how can we ensure that our club officers are trained properly? I do not believe that our club officer training is sufficient for any clubs, let alone those with, with brand new committees and members. It's a very key point, Karen, and thank you for raising it. As, you, as, a, as someone who's trying to support a club, obviously the club officer training, your division club officer training, is an important tool. But particularly for struggling clubs, you know, we, we, we find often that it's the struggling clubs that don't attend the club officer training. Or that when people come out, they've got some of the skills and the knowledge they need, but they need more. As someone who's trying to support a club, you may need to sit with that club committee or find a creative way of giving additional information, giving the specific information and ensuring that those officers are empowered to fulfill the roles that they have. So you may need to go do a little bit of extra work in training and empowering those club officers. Does that answer your question, Karen? 
Yes, Lois, it does. Thank you. Okay, not a problem. Next question. Okay. Okay, let me get the next question. I'm just copy and pasting. The way these questions are coming in, we should just have a session's question answers because they're really flowing so much. Kendo had a number of um, Lois. She, Lois asked if you could distribute the document you put together when you were running for international director. She says, I believe that could be very helpful to us. Would that be possible, Lois? Absolutely. I just need to find someone who can help me reformat it since I updated it. Because Toastmasters programs were very different back in 2011. <laughs> Absolutely. So I do need, I've added a lot more criteria on there and I need to try and get it back onto one page in the two columns that it had. So if anyone has any skills in formatting, please let me know. Microsoft Word is one of my specialities, so I'm very happy to do that for you. Do you have capacity to be doing yet another thing? I suppose I shouldn't, but formatting, unless it's going to be a very intricate formatting, it shouldn't take me frightfully long. Okay. I can do it. Margie, oh, send it to me. Yes. Thank you, Nick. Sure? Thanks, good. Nikki. Okay, so, let's. Uh, next question is Tendo. He's got three questions. So the first one was: I have experienced presidents resigning because the club is struggling, and they are not being honest about their struggles. The more I ask questions, the more frustrated the president gets until breaking point of resigning. Then Karen added on to that. Uh, or the president is not being supported by the committee and ends up doing everything to help the committee. So it's all about the inactivity of the club there. Shall I read those again? No, nope, that's quite fine because I'm going to come straight back to the, my first step. Take a step back from the support that you're trying to offer and have a very honest conversation, either with the committee or with the entire club and say, if we want to grow this club, we need to work together as a team. We need to be honest about what's happening in the club and work together to become stronger so that we all gain more from the Toastmasters programs. Yes, there are times that you're going to lose people. That is the sad reality. We lost clubs in District 74 where the president was struggling and the committee was struggling with the president and eventually or everyone else left except the president who landed up being president of a club of one, um, which as you realize is not very effective. So there are all sorts of dynamics. You need, I think, to reinforce that you are there to support and help, not to judge, not to pressurize. You're there to be a leader and an influencer to help that club grow so that the committee can be successful. And I know that's simple to say. Um, but see what ways you can find Tender to, to engage with as many people as you can so it becomes a club effort to grow, not you telling them Listen, guys, you've got to get stronger. They need to believe that they are walking that journey, that they are doing it because it's going to benefit them. Does that answer, Karen Tender? Yes, um, I'm answered. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Me too. No. I know it's tough. I know it is hard. I, I really, I don't underestimate, and this is a very high level view, but yeah, it needs, it needs to happen. Next question, Margie. Okay, uh, this was a quite a hot question that was going on while you were talking, and it started with Tendo saying, um, having members that are not paying to perform roles, in other words, their membership has lapsed, they haven't renewed, they are and then it was also tied up with the, and then how many meetings should a guest attend? Uh, 
how many meetings should guests attend until they are not referred to as guests anymore? And then, of course, about members not paying to perform their roles. That got quite to be quite a hot topic. Okay. I'm going to take these as the last questions for now. Um, and then put a question to you about how we go further with the questions. Okay. The pay before playing, as, as Margie puts it so nicely. If the members are seeing the value in what, they, what they're doing, if they're seeing the relevance of what they're doing, then they should understand the value does mean payment, that they should be happy to pay for the programs that are being offered and that they are participating in. I think it's almost to be turned around. Rather than saying you must pay so that you can participate, it's more a question of value. If you are seeing value in what you're doing, if these are helping you to develop skills in your work, in your real life, that you're using on a daily basis, isn't it worth paying? Isn't it worth participating? And I think there is also, while it's hard, there's the aspect of, as Margie says, if you haven't paid your membership dues, we cannot let you participate in the programs. Because once one person does it, other people do it. Because by not making a, a taking a stand on it, you're condoning it. It's a tough one to enforce. Um, but I, I do think that we need to shift the culture of our clubs rather than saying we're desperate for members. Well, we're keen to help people attain the skills that they want. And if it's important to them, they will see the value in paying. Again, it goes back to the meeting quality, it goes back to the effectiveness of the club to ensure that they are getting the value that they're paying for. And so there was a second part to the question, Margie. Are you there, Margie? Done it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> muted again. <laughs> How many meetings should a guest attend until they are not referred to as a guest anymore? They are not referred to as guests when they have paid their membership dues. But if you have guests who are coming back and back and back and aren't joining, someone needs to have a conversation with them about how much more they could be gaining in value were they to pay the dues, join the organization, and start working the programs themselves. And if they want to stay um, on as a guest, maybe, maybe just to add on that, this question came on the basis that we were saying that if you've got a struggling club with few members and they attend, they, like you, att you make a meeting and there's a lot of guests and members, we will ask the guests to participate. So the issue is we've got like a meeting, there's 10 people in that meeting, three of which are members and seven of which are guests. What happens in that meeting? Who's supposed to perform roles and who's not supposed to perform roles? Okay. If you can get a few more visiting Toastmasters to help with the roles, perfect. And then just work hard on that conversion. Run Margie's, um, as she said, the, the, the relaunch meeting because then your guests can participate and you need fewer members. So I, I think that that might be a solution for the, the club that you're referring to if you have a situation like that on a regular basis. Because the relaunch model can be used more than once because it is such an effective conversion tool but then just makes certain that those members are empowered to, to participate on the program over and beyond that because I'm competing the competent communicator assignments and competent leadership assignments. We are already over time. I am not wanting to keep too many people involved. I, yeah, um, I do want to ask Ed more to speak before we close, but I want to try and find a way that we can still address your questions. If I'm correct, 
all of you um, but Namusa are on Facebook. So possibly I could post the questions and answers on the Southern African Toastmasters group so that other people could get value from your questions as well. Would that work? This is why I hate not being able to see the chat line. <laughs> I can't see any nodding heads. L Lois, I'll answer for you. Yeah. I will extract the questions for you and I can send the emails to you and I think it's an awesome idea to put them on the group and have discussion around it. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it would uh, create a lot of discussion on the group, very educational and I'm just going yes, 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 awesome idea. <coughs> Also, I will say that I, I think all of you, possibly bar and tender, um, have my email address. So if you have specific queries that you'd like an answer on, drop me an email and I'll do my best to either give you a call or discuss it with you via email. Let's get some of these issues, try and find ways to support and give you some resolution and help the clubs that you're working. With. Lois, it's Nikki. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, maybe this is a good time to try and revive the D74 Clubs uh, Coaches group. It is still there. Yep. Um, it's the, the, there is a Facebook group called D74 Clubs and Coaches, which yes. I started four or five years ago, probably more than that now when I was club support coordinator as a way of getting people, in fact people from around the world, to write out the questions that they had, to explain some of the challenges they're having and get help, support and just encouragement from others who are experiencing the same thing. So if that is a good group that you'd like to join, I will try and figure out how to put a link to it on the Southern African Toastmasters group as well. Or you can simply search for D74 Clubs and Coaches. And it's a Facebook group. I think anyone can apply to join and we can just um, accept that and then we can start discussing issues there. So thanks for that suggestion, Nikki. Okay, I'm going to ask if Margie can actually give me the the just the discussion, the comments as well as the, the questions. Pass it all on to me so that I can understand the threads of discussion that are happening. I want to say thank you for participating in the call. And just to close off, I'd like to yield the microphone, so to speak, to our club growth director, distinguished toastmaster, Edmo Gavandani, who's the one who made this workshop possible. And from my side, thanks to Edmo. And let's hear a few words from Edmo. So if we can... Pass control over to Edmore, please. Thank you very much, uh, Lloyd. Oh, you can hear me? We can. Thank you. This has been a very informative. This has been a very informative session, and uh, it is a lot of insights from the questions. I can tell that there is excitement and there is need for this kind of platform to have this kind of platform frequently. I had an experience as a club coach with one of uh, the clubs in Zimbabwe, which was Capital Club, a club that had been reduced to maybe just one member. We had to transfer at least uh, another member from uh, Executive Club, which was the stronger club, and we now had two members. And I was the club coach for this club. I think through the, some of the elements that, uh, that Lois mentioned, particularly that of the buy-in, so we needed buy-in so that we could uh, we could proceed. Personally, I gained a lot from being a club coach, so which I think is another element that maybe Lois did not quite uh, touch on in this. As a club coach, there are certain skills that you that you gain. Now, as you assist other clubs subsequently, you find it becomes easier and easier. So with that, there's also something that you gain besides. The, the award that you'll be working towards 
also personally you grow. I think it was Stephen Covey who said that you learn better when you teach. So when you're assisting the club and we are, when you're supporting the club, you also learn a great deal. So this is something that I would encourage people to get involved with, the area directors or other members of the district to get involved with. If I may just comment on uh, the relaunch model. The relaunch model is a fantastic model. I think Maggie has put a lot of work in it and I feel she has actually written it out more like a Toastmasters manual. And one of the things that I tell people, read the manual, everything is in the manual. And when you read the manual and you follow what the manual says, you're bound to gain the most. So what I would say about the relaunch model, use all the stationery that's there. Print out all the forms that are required and follow through that meeting. We successfully used the relaunch model uh, in one of the clubs which is called Waterfront and it was amazing, it's just phenomenal. I would encourage that when you adopt this model, use it as it is. I know after some time you can then adapt it as the club grows and as the members mature. But for now, the stationery is great stationery and just use it, use it as it is. And with the work that Maggie has put in it, I'm sure it is a masterpiece. For those who have tried to use it, it's something which is great. I think I've said a lot, but just to thank everyone who managed to make it to this workshop, just then share it with others. I'm sure we can always arrange a follow-up uh, follow session or have active discussion on the coaches group so that we assist each other, so that everyone has an opportunity to share their ideas. And also, the district is a great resource. Let's utilize the resources, like Lois was saying, that reach out and get resources. I can go on and on, but uh, I would just like to thank everyone who made it to the call. I would like to thank Maggie as well for the relaunch model and also making it part of this call, but mostly Moise for accepting to take us through the session, and I'm sure that you are always available to assist. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Ethel, and from my side, my thanks as well. To all of you, my wish for you to be successful and to help your club be successful. You have my email address, you have my Facebook um, contacts. Let's start working together, supporting and encouraging each other so that we can grow our clubs and keep our districts as strong as possible. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for participating. I hope you've gained value. And if you'd like to give me some feedback on the workshop, please drop me a mail. Let me know how we did, what you feel we can do better. And that's us. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Good night. Shall we give Lois a big round of applause? Clap, 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 clap into your microphone. Thanks. Thank you. And good night.